Welcome back to the channel guys. Today, something interesting has turned up. This is the Helltech Mesh Node T114. So this is basically Helltech's new version of the Lower32 V3. So let's dive straight in then. So this is, interestingly, this device is based on the NRF52 chipset. So it should be pretty low power consumption, which is what we want um, with these sort of devices nowadays. Um, so let's open this up and have a look inside. Wow, that is pretty cool. Um, so this, the first thing you notice about this is it's got a bigger screen, a bigger OLED screen than the, this is the original um, V3 Lower32. So bigger OLED screen, and it is actually, this is actually full color, I believe as well. Um, so I've, I've literally only just kind of got this out the, of out the box and I've kind of, I've plugged it in once already, um, just to have a quick look. Um, so we kind of see, you're seeing this the same as me really, just kind of having a look at it for the first time. So you've got a couple of connectors on the back. Um, is that, that's a solar input on the back by the looks of things as well. That's interesting. Um, and we've also got a obviously the battery connector now this is like an expansion connector which is used for GPS now they have actually sent me the GPS unit as well which is this um, this little thing here um, so basically you've got your GPS chipset on the back and the antenna uh, for the GPS on the top there and then it's obviously connected um, I don't know why there's all these wires but <laughs> um, normally it's only four or so but yeah this looks really really interesting um, that's a Bluetooth antenna by the looks of things. It's got BT written on it. Um, obviously, you've still got GPIOs and stuff on the back, so you've got plenty of, plenty of connectivity. But what's interesting is this plastic kind of moulding around here, because this is the original device. Obviously, they just had a plastic shell around the around the display, but now they've got a plastic shell around the whole thing, and that kind of lines up with the buttons under here. So you can actually kind of it's just a bit nicer to use in that way. Um, they have actually also sent me a case as well for this, which is this one here. Um, now, I've seen some comments, people saying, they've seen this on the website already and saying, oh, I don't really like it, but I quite like this case, actually. Um, it's nice to have a kind of, you know, a proper case for this device, and it looks like this, you'd be able to fit a battery in there um, and the GPS. Like Maybe if you use like one of these little kind of um, small lipos you know that might even fit in there so I'm gonna have a look and see if I can do that they've also on this case got a cutout for the for the SMA pigtail which is really good even though they give you this antenna which we'll test that to see if that's any good um, and also this this antenna which is quite interesting they've kind of gone back to this kind of coily helical thing uh, which I actually originally thought was pretty good, this antenna. Um, so, yeah, we'll give all this lot a test. But the first thing I want to do is um, is fire this up and just see what see what happens. Right, so I've just fired this up and connected um, the USB lead to this from the computer. Um, this has no firmware on here, so I've just gone straight into the sort of double press uh, of, the, of the reset button and it gives you the disk mode so you can load firmware on. Um, but look at this, look at the display. Um, I think this might have a cover over the top of it this song. I'll have to investigate that further. But, but look at the display. It looks really high resolution. I'll try and get closer to the camera there. Um, but yeah, look, full colour as well. So this could be really interesting, you know, once we get some more... It's particularly like all the gooey stuff that's sort of been happening at the moment. Uh, to have something a bit more, you know, nicer to look at than the, just the, the normal kind of, you know, monochrome OLED. That's pretty interesting you might be able to have some nice sort of old school pager skins that you could use um you know with this or something anyway i'm getting carried away now <laughs> so obviously we're going to want to get meshtastic running on this i know meshtastic does actually support this device because i've seen some of the the source code and i, I know that um they're, they're working on this so i'm going to get hold of a pre-release meshtastic firmware build for this um it might not be stable but we're going to at least be able to just see um if it works so the one I've got is this one here, which is the Helltech Mesh Node uh, 2.4.13, that one there. And then like everything else, you can just basically drag that onto the device um, because it's in disk mode. Uh, so you can just drag that onto here and it will just flash the device. So we'll just do that and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it's done. I've just unplugged the, uh, the power just to give it a complete reboot. So you get this little flash here, green light comes on, and there we go. There's Meshtastic firmware. Um, whether it's running or not properly, I don't know. 
Uh, it's saying unset. First thing you notice is it's it's tiny. Like the display is obviously really really high res, so um, you're getting a small, very very small text on there, which I'm actually fine with. I like to see more more stuff on the screen. Got no problem with that at all. But obviously as time goes on, you know they might utilise the uh, the screen on this um, to do some some sort of more interesting stuff. Um, you know having the full colour. GUI on here with a proper node list like you know a bit like on the TDEC GUI firmware where you've got this lovely node list I mean that would be totally possible to do on there I would have thought um, you know obviously you've only got one button to play with here but a really cut down version of that would be awesome okay so let's see if we can configure this device so obviously I'm just going to do it by by Bluetooth here um, and it's going to be that one, I believe. So there you go, the usual display here, which shows you your, your passcode. So I'm going to put that in 420643, pair that, and has it come up? Is it, what's it doing? Yep, yeah, it's working. By the looks of things. Okay, so that's that. We'll set it up. Um, I'll just do the setup quickly on this one. Right, I've just done all the setup and I've called this node the T Heltec T114 mesh node. So if you're out there and you see this, <laughs> then you know that this is the one because it's probably the only one out there right now. Um, I love doing this stuff. It hasn't even got a name there at the moment. Right, so the node list seems to be populating quite nicely. This is gonna take a while, obviously, to come to get all of my local nodes um, and all this sort of stuff kind of uh, trickling through. And um, sometimes you notice that you know, when you first sort of have a new node or you've you've cleared the database, um, it can take a while and it puts more strain on the CPU at that point as it's kind of obviously doing lots of lots of stuff. So um, yeah, <clears throat> best thing is not to just fiddle with it too much whilst it's doing that. Um, it's probably good good advice, and you're going to get lots of unknown usernames if that's ticked on there. Um, so we'll let that do its thing. So next up, I've hooked up a little power meter here because I just want to see what the output power of these are. Um, you know, based on before, we should be around the sort of 100 milliwatt kind of level, um, somewhere around there. But some of these do kick out a little bit more power than others. So let's just wait for its first little beacon to sort of, um, you know, happen. And then, so yeah, 135 milliwatts, which is that, I think that's comparable. I think that's, I mean, you know, they're all using the same chipset, but obviously, I think that's about average for a Helltech. Anyway, we'll, at least we know it's putting out, um, you know, a healthy amount of power anyway. Whilst we're testing stuff out, this is one of the antennas that came with the Helltech. Um, you know, it's not that great around 870, um, which is where all our, most of our activity is. SWR is like 2.3. Um, you know, it might change a bit from, you know, kind of moving this around a little bit. But generally, it's not kind of that good, this antenna. Um, so it'll work probably, but you know, you won't get amazing results from it. I've just tried this one as well. Funnily enough, this one is actually a bit better look, if you kind of move it away from the bench a bit. Um, so yeah, we're, we're talking around 1. Yeah, 1. 1.7. You know, if we pull this out around here or something like that, it might go down a bit. Um, yeah, 1.65. So, and it's fairly flat going off into the into the sort of distance up that way towards one gig. So if you're gonna make this node proper low profile, this little antenna inside the case would actually probably be okay. So talking about the case then, I'm sure Chris from Zero Fox is gonna be well on to making um, a funky case for this little device, maybe like a Nibbler, um, a Nibbler V2 or something like that, which would be really good. Um, this is the case that comes with it. Well, I think you have to, might have to order this you know as an extra but but yeah i'm just going to assemble this so inside this little bag of hardware you get with it you get four screws to put this case together um you get the antenna hardware as well which is obviously to secure this sma um to this case in here and then you get these two little buttons as well which go in those recesses there so that you could actually push these buttons when it's in the case. I love this stuff, it's like proper hobby stuff. You've got to fiddle around and <laughs> put all this stuff together. Um, but it's really cool. So let's get this Heltec in, in here as well then. So that kind of lines up to that. I'm intrigued about this solar input um, because I've been doing a lot of stuff with solar at the minute um, and you know trying to use a really trying to use really small panels um, to make something that just runs for ages but just isn't 
isn't massive. Um, so, you know, these like little NRF um, based devices, they just run for so long on a um, on solar. Right, I need to concentrate with this because I might end up smashing that OLED screen, which I don't really want to. Right, so that doesn't click down, it just sort of rests on there. And I think the other part of this case there just kind of holds that in place. So you're probably best maybe doing it that way around. Just trying to get the SMA into that little hole there at the moment is proving a little bit difficult because it's, it's actually quite, it's quite tight there. So I did have to open this hole out a little bit. It's a little bit tight in there. So Heltec have got their tolerances right up to the nail on there. Um, but it does go in. And it's absolutely fine so I'm gonna it's better that it's tight than, than loose um, so I'm just gonna bolt the old hardware up. I'll tell you what this is reminding me of actually it's reminding me of this little device the Pico um, the Pico APRS very similar to that so I don't know maybe it would be better you know as firmware sort of goes forward maybe you could have it that way around so actually kind of have all your information going in the portrait mode I don't know That'd be quite cool. So then it'd be like a little, almost like a little radio. Okay, so with a lot of fiddling around, I've managed to get everything in this box, including a little 650, uh, 650 or 600 milliamp hour battery in there as well. GPS is in there. It's already got a lock as well, which is pretty cool. And um, so yeah, this is a completely operational little node now. So to give you an idea of size, so we've got a T Echo here, we've got a Nibbler here. So you can see here, it's actually kind of smaller than smaller than both of them there, which um, obviously you could even you could even shave off more because there's just empty space in there. So that's one for you, Chris. Get your nibblers around that and design us a nice slim case for it. So that just about sums up this video about the Mesh Node T114 from Helltech. Um, it's really great to see new products from Helltech, and this is running in. I think with all the options, it's just over 40 bucks um, so I don't know what that would be like in the UK price uh, by the time it comes through with a bit of customs on there but but yeah I really like this it's a good step forward for Helltech um, to sort of stay in the game they were sort of feeling a little bit behind with um, with the lower 32s now running on ESP32 and you know these are obviously running on the NOF52 chipset which is a lot more uh, efficient power wise the fact that this has got a solar input as well is super interesting. I'm going to be testing that out. Um, but yeah, overall, a cool little device. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with the firmware going forward. It'd be nice to utilise this colour screen. So we'll see what happens there. But overall, you should see this pop up on the mesh if you're around the London area. And um, all the links to this will be in the description below. I don't think it's shipping just yet, but as normal, you know, we sort of get this stuff a little bit ahead of time and then you can sort of see it and work out if you want to want to go ahead and go for it. But I'll keep you updated on how this goes and I'll catch you next time, guys.